Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Complacent Lover by Graham Greene. So this is a play, this is the Penguin Plays edition. I'm going to read you the blurb and then we're going to go through and check out some of my tabs and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. In The Complacent Lover we have a classic triangle. Victor, a very English husband who takes his wife for granted and bores all his acquaintances with his endlessly repeated jokes. Mary, his wife, a devoted and unselfish mother who loves him as a brother, who finds unruffled domesticity so damn boring for the lover. Graham Greene's treatment of this situation is original, witty, and full of sad truths about the compromises people make to survive. So I'm not normally one for love triangles, but um, I don't know, Graham Greene's a cracking author, he's one of my all-time favourite authors. He writes human interest very well, and so I could kind of overlook it for this. And so Mary and Clive are talking to each other here, and Mary says, he's on the midday plane, and Clive says, we may pass each other at the airport, don't worry, I'll be ready to hide my face behind a newspaper. And Mary goes, you needn't. He wouldn't think there was anything wrong. Is he as dumb as that? It's not dumbness. When a man doesn't want a woman anymore, he can't imagine anyone else desiring her, that's all. So the play is kind of full of little one-liners like that, which uh, show a lot about uh, human insight, I think. Clive uh, has this line, he says, A loveless marriage isn't good for children, so the Sunday Mirror says. Clive says, All film magnates suffer from collapsed currencies. It's rather like, vis it's rather like visiting a fashionable abortionist. And later on in that conversation, Mary says, uh, I've known you for less than two months and I've known Victor for 16 years. He's never been unkind, even when I've run up bills. He's a good father. The children love him. Particularly Robin. It wasn't his fault we stopped sleeping together. I warned you before, Clive. Marriage kills that. And Clive buys her these uh, earrings and Victor finds out. And uh, Mary says, he went to a black marketer in Knightsbridge, a currency specialist. And Victor replies, it's the only romantic thing a man can do in these days, risk prison for a woman. I can't even do that. I'm a father. I can only give you a scarf with a map of Amsterdam on it. They look as though they're good diamonds. And Victor says here, uh, You were always very quiet when we made love, but you had one habit you didn't know yourself. In the old days, just before going to sleep, if you'd been satisfied, you would touch my face and say thank you. And then a time came when I realised that for months you'd said nothing. You'd only touch my face. And then he asks her if she says thank you to her lover. And I like this conversation between Robin and Victor. Uh, Robin goes, it's not a very good party, is it, as parties go? No. There's a sort of mood around. What kind of mood? Like the last act in Macbeth. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Couldn't you be a bit more precise? Everybody seems to be expecting something. Something like the wood coming to Dunsinane. You seem to know Macbeth very well. Yes, I'm acting the second murderer at the end of term. But I may be the first murderer yet because the first murderer has got mumps. That's why you shouldn't be anti-vaxxers, kids. Mary says, uh, she's actually covering for something, but she says, there's a, new, there's a new assistant. She's a bit careless. There's nothing more tiring than training a new girl. Yeah, I hate having to train new people. Mary calls Clive a bastard, which I enjoy because I like that word. Victor says, it's unfair, isn't it, that we're only dressed for a domestic comedy? A suicide looks better in a toga, and carbon monoxide poisoning is not exactly a Roman death. And Mary says to Victor, you wouldn't have. You're a good man, Victor. Be glad you aren't married to a good woman. The good are horribly hard to leave. And then when Victor and Clive are talking to each other after it's sort of all come out in the open, uh, Victor says, I liked you a lot better when I heard that you'd risked a black market currency deal to get them for her. Talking about the earrings. And then towards the end we get um, Clive has this great little speech, he says, I'm not being sour, Mary. This is the sad truth, even though I've never loved anyone as much as you. I know that one day I shall get tired of going away at night and leaving you two together. I shall get tired of arranging our holidays to suit his convenience. I shall get tired of all the times when we have to cancel things at the last moment. And I shall get tired of waiting outside the shops in Paris or Brussels while you buy the children's shoes. And then you'll leave me? No, then when you see how tired I am, you'll leave me. That's what I dread. And then finally, I want to just read this out here, a little uh, postscript on censorship, which I thought was interesting. All praise must be given to the Lord Chamberlain, who has at last admitted that homosexuality is a theme which may be presented on the English stage. Now we have some reason to hope that in the course of one or two more decades, heterosexuality may also be permitted. In the meanwhile, readers of this play may have a little fun determining which solitary adjective and which passage of three lines the Lord Chamberlain and his officers are found too indecent for the theatre. So yeah, The Complacent Lover by Graham Greene uh, is not necessarily my ideal subject matter for a playbook. As I say, Greene does this uh, 
human, uh, you know, humanization of the characters really well to the point at which I actually cared all about all three people in this love triangle when usually I, I, I couldn't care less. Uh, I would go and see this performed as well. I think that would be cool. Overall, I gave it a four out of five. So yeah, but that's what I thought of The Complacent Lover by Graham Greene. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, or even better, if you've seen this play. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.